Steph's got it. Eight seconds. The three to win the game. And he gives the night night. Yeah, yeah, that ready. was nothing. <laughs> now, you were not going to shoot a two in that final uh, ten no seconds, way. right? No way. We predicted that. Uh, with all the challenges and Mike Brown trying to get an extra possession, <laughs> uh, it's time to go home and put the kids to bed. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. That dude right there is a bad, bad man. I mean, before the entire Chase Center went bananas with that buzzer three, the Kings actually were in control of that game, leading as much as 18 points by the end of the third quarter. And then with around seven minutes left in the fourth, the Golden State Warriors were still down by 10. So what exactly happened? Well, the short answer to that was the chef went cooking and just simply took over. First, he took Barnes to dancing lessons with this step back three. Then he banked it off the glass with a floater. And look at GP2 here. I mean, he already knows it's going in, even before Steph Curry releases it. Steph's hands were basically burning at this point. Just look here. He was hitting Dirk-esque fadeaways like this. Then down by four with 41 seconds left. Steph made this ridiculous play off the timeout to cut down the lead to one before splashing down this game-winning three to send the Kings packing, or as he would call it, putting the kids to bed for good. To wrap our heads around how crazy that was, Steph scored 16 in the final frame and ended the night with 30 big points along with four rebounds, five assists, one steal, and one block. Just like that, the Dubs got close to closing out their preseason, and based on Steph's latest performance, as well as the numbers that the other guys have put up in the last four preseason games, the Warriors just put everyone on notice. And if you think that this is just going to be a one-time preseason thing, well, you better think again. Because to me, this is just an introduction to what's about to come. Now, apart from Steph, the new old kid on the block, Chris Paul, also showed up in the last four games. And as you can see, CP3 has made the lives of his teammates much easier by dishing out a good amount of assists on limited minutes to show that he's not a bad fit with the dubs as most pundits and analysts said he was gonna be. I mean, I must say that his impeccable chemistry with Dario Saric on pick and roll situations was the highlight of his preseason, because there were a lot of times that these two just complimented one another like peanut butter and jelly. Here's a perfect example so you can see. As soon as CP3 turned the corner, the Kings knew that CP3 loves to take those mid-range J's at the foul line. Now, the moment they closed out on him, the point god just hooked it back to Saric for an easy floater in the lane. Again, here's the Saric CP3 two-man game in action. Paul was able to penetrate the lane, and when he noticed that Sabonis was out of position, he threw an on-point bounce pass to Saric, who yet again delivered the bucket, plus a foul. Now, in this dribble handoff, if the defender goes under, just like what Hachimura did here, CP3 will gladly make him pay by drilling the wide open shot. And lastly, if the big man drops way too much beyond his coverage area, Saric will then just pop out and stick a three of his own. Now, speaking of Saric, the numbers don't lie, folks. See, in those four preseason outings, he basically scored more as his minutes went up. And in their last game against the Kings, Saric had 14 points, six rebounds, three assists, and two steals on 60% shooting to show the dubs that they made the right decision in picking him up this offseason. Well, aside from CP3 and Saric, the dubs young guns, particularly Moses Moody and Jonathan Kuminga, also showed up in the preseason, and it looks like these two are now more than ready to take the big leap in year three. I mean, in the last four games, Jonathan Kuminga was just absolutely sensational averaging 24 points, 5.8 rebounds, and one steal. But what's crazy about his numbers is that he's shooting 53.4% from the field, and check this out, 45.5% from the three-point line. Now, Moody, on the other hand, also had a stellar preseason by averaging 12 points a ball game while registering high shooting splits on the field, three-point line, and from the foul line. 
Most analysts and die-hard Warriors fans have heavily predicted that this is the year that JK will finally be unleashed. And I must say, it seems that he is really heading that way based on his preseason performance. See, here's JK with LeBron staring daggers in front of him. Now, watch what happens next. I mean, Kaminga just went up there from 0 to 100 in the blink of an eye. But see, that's nothing compared to this next one. As Max Christie gets down the court, look at how Kaminga mirrors him all the way through. And the moment he jumps up, Kaminga is there to meet him up top to send it right back to him. Anyways, Moses Moody also showed some major improvements in his game, particularly with the way he scores the ball on the offensive end from inside and out. You can observe that Moody now has more confidence in shooting the rock far from the basket, just like in this play right here. The dubs run a wide pin down here for Moody at the wing. Now, after he curls above the screen, JK finds him wide open and without hesitation, Moody just knocks it down straight through the hatch. And in this downhill drive, look at how Moody finishes this one strong, despite the presence of the lengthy Christian Wood in front of him. In those four preseason games, Kuminga showed his dominance on both ends of the floor with his raw athleticism, while Moody proved that he has the potential to become a legit 3 and D two-way threat for the Dubs in the upcoming season. Now, aside from them, the Dubs' two new rookies, Brandon Pajimski and Trace Jackson Davis, also strutted their stuff and made a splash during the preseason showcase. I mean, Pods filled up the stat sheet by doing all-around work. Meanwhile, TJD had a double-double against the Kings on 42.9%, and he showed that he can contribute at a high level if you spare him some minutes. Now, last but not least, the other guy who showed up big time this preseason for the dubs is Andrew Wiggins. I mean, two-way Wiggs racked up 12.8 points while shooting 50% from the field and 37.5% from three in just 21 and a half minutes of play. Although we may see him take a larger role on the defensive side next season, Wiggins showed in those four preseason games that he can revert to being a full-time scorer, just like when he was playing in Minnesota. Look at his activity right here. So as Looney is about to deliver the handoff, Wiggins just faked out his defender, and that little separation allowed Looney to set a good pick, which caught his defender, and coming off the screen, Wiggins just popped this free throw line jumper with confidence. And in this isolation play, look at how Wiggins schooled Herter here as he went to his right and then shifted back to the left before spinning right back to finish it off with a nice one-hander. I mean, that's mad skills right there coming from Wiggs. Now, if we're going to take a look at the graphic right here, you can see that the names that we just talked about were the usual suspects that made them go undefeated in this preseason. But um, aside from Steph, JK, Pods, and TJD, the other guys also played really well, like Kevon Looney, who led the dubs in rebounding. And there were also the role players like GP2 and Corey Joseph, who chipped in a couple of steals and assists to help the dubs cause. Anyway, in those four undefeated preseason matchups, the new look dubs showed glimpses of their true potential as a unit and how lethal and dangerous they can be in the upcoming season. With Clay still warming up and Draymond sitting out with injury, it's just crazy to think that the dubs are already this good even without those two. And with this said, I think the remaining 29 teams should bring their A game every single night because this revamped dub squad is going to be a major problem as the season develops.